immediate fighter cover and rescue! Come in, anybody! Mayday! Requesting immediate assistance! Anyone, please! Barely receiving you, Gamma 39er. This is Terran Outpost Riviera responding. What is your situation? Oh, thank God! Our wing was ambushed! We didn't have a chance! I'm sure they're tracking me! Calm down, sir. Who attacked you? Was it the Vasudans? Vasudans were killed too! They slaughtered everyone! Sir, you have to calm down. You were attacked by Vasudans. Is that true? No, no! We were in a skirmish with a Vasudan patrol, and they just came out of nowhere and killed everyone! Who came out of nowhere, pilot? I, I don't know. They weren't Vasudans, and they weren't Terran. Oh, God. They're these death black ships, and they feel like pilot. They're their weapons pilot. were too much. They wasted everyone! Pilot, sit tight. We're sending a recovery craft right now. Send fighters! I I know they're following me! Send everything you have now! Sir, I don't have anyone else on the scope. You're home free. It's going to be all right. No, it isn't! You don't understand! You weren't there! I can feel them following me! Oh my god! I'm dead! We're all dead! Picking up unknown jump signatures. I need to scramble the fighters! It's too late! Oh god! What the hell is that? Operation Thresher in the Antares system did not proceed as planned. Terran Command estimates Terran losses at 504 pilots dead, 14 missing, and presumed dead. The Vasudan foothold on Vasuda Prime and Subspace Node remains solid. However, their supply lines have been cut off, which means they are most likely lacking reinforcements and supplies. Expect more news on that front in tomorrow's briefing. There have been many rumors about the appearance of another sentient species. These are rumors, nothing more. Investigation of the Ross-128 attack has determined nothing. Concern yourselves with the known enemy, the Vasudans. There is to be no more talk of phantom ships. Let this serve as a welcome aboard to all newly arrived pilots aboard the Galatea. Since you're here, your flight records must speak highly of you already. Serve the Galatea well. She's a fine ship. Report to your flight stations at 0830 for your squadron briefings. Familiarize yourself with the specifications of the GTD Orion-class destroyer, the Apollo Space Superiority Fighter, and the ML-16 Laser. Information on all of these can be found in the tech room. Terran Command has informed us that Lieutenant Alex McCarthy, formerly stationed on board the GTD Intrepid, has defected to the Vasudans along with an unknown number of fighters and several personnel. He has also managed to steal the plans for the Avenger prototype cannon. These need to be recovered immediately. Vasudan agents under Terran control have leaked information regarding McCarthy's plans in the Antares system. Since the Galate is already in Antares, we have been assigned to lead an attack on McCarthy's forces. This operation is to be carried out by the numbers. Traitors to the Terran cause are not to be tolerated. McCarthy will serve as an example when he is brought in. The Galatea has received a full complement of the new Valkyrie Interceptor fighters. Some of you may remember the Angel Scout fighter. It has been completely modified and fitted with two additional engines, making it the fastest fighter in the fleet. It has been redesignated the Valkyrie. It should enable you to make short work of enemy fighters. Report for mission briefing in 20 minutes. Ours was a proud people, and always the strongest. For thousands of years, our empire expanded. For so long, we could imagine ourselves alone in the universe. For so long, never did we encounter advanced life. And we traveled.
traveled faster and farther, spreading in our galaxy. And before long, we could see the day when our reachable systems would have been exploited. And then, there would be nowhere else to go. And we discovered subspace. It gave us our galaxy, and it gave us the universe. And we saw other advanced life. And we subdued it, or we crushed it. In months, the elimination of billions of years of evolution on a similar but slower path. With subspace, our empire would surely know no boundaries. Terran Command has confirmed the existence of a new species. Until further contact is established, Command has designated them Sheevans. The Sheevans have inflicted heavy casualties to both Terran and Vasudan forces in the Beta Cygni and Vega systems, and appear to be making a rapid push into other key systems along the Terran Vasudan front. All contact has been lost with our forces in the IKEA and Ross 128 systems. The Vasudan government has contacted the GTA and proposed a ceasefire. Considering the reports regarding the Vasudan and Terran losses to the Shivans, this should not come as a surprise. Terran Command has not yet responded. Expect to hear more from Terran Command on this later today. All Shivan forces should be considered a serious threat. You are authorized to engage any Shivan ship that stands in the way of your mission objectives. Attempts to establish communication with the Shivans have failed. Intelligence will continue its attempts to learn more about this new adversary. What little information has been learned about Shivan technology concerns their fighter shielding system. The shield system makes them nearly impervious to our ML-16 laser. R&D is currently modifying the Avenger prototype cannon to make it more useful against the shields. Additionally, our fighters cannot target their ships due to our lack of data regarding the Shivan electronic systems. Plans are currently underway to remedy this situation. Terran Intelligence is working around the clock to give us more information. Until then, we have been ordered to move into the Beta Cygni system and monitor any activity. The GTA has signed a ceasefire and non-aggression pact with the Vasudans. Command has already expressed great relief, largely due to the huge drain on military and economic resources the war has caused in the past few years. The end of the 14-year war should bring peace. Unfortunately, there is no time to breathe easy. After the Third Fleet lost the GTD Amadeus in the Vega system, the GTA and the Parliament of Vasuda have both declared open states of war against the Shivan forces. Unfortunately, not all Vasudan forces have agreed to the ceasefire. Reports have been received of attacks by a rogue group of Vasudans calling themselves the Hammer of Light. The Hammer of Light appears to be willfully aiding the Shivan cause, citing some Vasudan legend about the coming of an all-powerful race. If you encounter any HOL forces, you are to treat them as hostile and are to use any force necessary to neutralize them. With the vital data gathered by the Galate at the IKEA depot, our technicians now know enough about Shivan technology to successfully target their ships. You should also be able to track them on radar. The Avenger cannon is now being loaded on every Terran and Vasudan ship in the galaxy. You will find these cannons far more effective against the Shivan shields. A strike squad sent from the 5th Fleet into the IKEA system was able to recover some Shivan shield prototypes. Fully functioning versions of this technology are being developed for use on GTA fighters. The shields themselves are being transferred through the Beta Cygni system to the Ribos system. This shipment must arrive in Ribos. Report to mission briefing in 30 minutes. Ready? All set. Starting sequence 52 gamma. 5, 4, 
Three, Power level steady at 1.21 gigawatts. Are holding steady. And sequence two in three, two, one, mark. That's it. It held. Reading 59% energy loss, but it held. Good morning, pilots. I'm gonna get right to it. The Sheevan forces are sprouting up everywhere, and it's no secret that our front lines are taking a beating. As you probably know, no one has been able to communicate with them, and Terran intelligence has no leads on their origins or their motives. On the upside, their shielding technology seems to be working just fine for us. By this afternoon, all fighters stationed on the Galatea will have been fitted with them. Try to keep them intact, all right? The cruiser Tyrannus is suspected to be the source of command for the Sheevans in this sector. It's here in the IKEA system, and we suspect it's low on fighters and supplies due to its recent attack runs. We have reason to believe it will soon jump to another system to resupply. We don't know where it will jump to, but there is only one subspace node out of IKEA, and we intend to blockade it. In the interest of learning more about the slippery bastards, we're going to attempt something bold. The capture of the Tyrannus. If this goes off, it will give us an opportunity to study Sheevan technology up close, and bag a few live Sheevans in the process. In order to do this, we will conduct a series of missions designed to take out the cruiser's escorts and defenses. Time to chip away at the boulder, people. That is all. Report to your flight leaders for your orders. Dismissed! Initial attacks have gone off without a hitch. The Tyrannus is on her last leg. Delta and Epsilon wings have destroyed most of the Tyrannus' fighter escort. It is time to finish the job. To this end, Terran Command has sent a full wing of Athena bombers equipped with a newly developed stiletto bomb. The Athena is our most maneuverable bomber. It carries a massive payload, yet in dogfights, is nearly as effective as a fighter. The Stiletto Bomb has now been thoroughly tested back in Seoul, and is now ready for use. It can be used to destroy subsystems on any ship, and should prove more effective than the Disruptor Cannon. The electronic seeking device should make it simple to use. Just point and shoot. The Leto homing capabilities are limited, so make sure you get a clean shot before you launch. The Stiletto should be especially useful in destroying the Tyrannus' engines and weapon systems. All Athena bombers will be equipped with Stilettos and will be piloted by Alpha Wing. When the destroyers came for us, we attacked. Never had we been defeated. They were like the others, strange, hideous, resisting, fighting. Only these were not like the others. They did not die. We made our first retreat. We could forego one system. We left it to the destroyers and went elsewhere. But they followed. They hunted us. They followed us when we retreated, discovered where we lived. For a long time, we did not know why they chased us. They were no ordinary enemy. They did not seek our territory, our technology, our resources. Now we know our crime was sin. We've just received some discouraging news from Terran Command, pilots. At 0300 today, after the captured Tyrannus was towed to Tombaugh installation in the Ribo system, the Sheevan staged a major ambush. There isn't a lot of confirmation from the footage yet, but it's clear that a Sheevan destroyer of massive proportions jumped in and destroyed Tombaugh Station, along with all of its defenses. We have designated this new class of destroyer, Lucifer. Debris from the station is still falling from orbit on Ribos 4. Terran and Vesudan fighters and cruisers engaged the Lucifer, but were wiped out quickly. Footage suggests that the Lucifer was using a new type of shield, impervious to any of our attacks. Needless to say, this is grim news. If the Sheevans indeed have managed to shield a vessel of that magnitude, it's merely a matter of time before they wipe out all frontline installations and march through to our home systems. Since all attempts at communication with the Sheevans have ended in violence, it appears unlikely that a diplomatic solution will work. 
At this point, the Sheevans have control of Beta Cygni, Beetlejuice, Ross 128, Ikea, and Regulus. Most of the Vasudan forces are gathering in Vega for a counter-strike, while we are gathering our fleet in Antares for an effort to retake Ribos and Beta Cygni. Oddly enough, the Sheevans don't seem to be interested in taking control of any planets in the systems or gathering natural resources. Instead, they seem to be focused on controlling individual jump nodes. Research and development teams at Seoul have recently completed development on a few new weapons. A group of Terran scientists has returned from a previously unexplored system known as Alaramus and bring with them a new weapon called the Flail. The Flail is quite different from our typical energy cannons. Please consult the weapons database in the tech room for more details. Our communications with Vasudan technicians have yielded the Interceptor missile. By combining the Vasudan designed engine with a Terran warhead, we were able to produce the most powerful anti-fighter weapon yet. It's an aspect-seeking missile and requires a few seconds to lock onto the enemy's engine signature, but its speed and accuracy make it lethal. Use it well. The Hammer of Light has decimated the Vasudan fleet at Vega. Most of the surviving Vasudan forces have retreated to Deneb and Antares. Because our fleet is also holding Antares, relations between the VPE and the GTA have been strained. In order to quell the tension, we have been ordered to eliminate all Hammer of Light outposts in the vicinity. Fortunately, we have some new tools to assist us. Our first new weapon is the Phoenix 5 anti-bomber warhead. This missile can puncture even the thickest of shields and can also be used effectively against larger targets, like freighters. More details are available in the tech room. We have also acquired a wing of the new Medusa bombers. Though they are slower and less maneuverable than the Athena, they are far more powerful. Once again, full details can be found in the tech room. The new Tsunami Bomb is the ultimate anti-cruiser weapon and can be carried by the Medusas. Just a few of these will take out any cruiser, and the Hammer of Light Aten class cruisers are no exception. You'll be using this bomb quite often against major Hammer of Light outposts. Bravo 2, entering disabled freighter. Roger, Bravo 2. Keep the chatter to a minimum. Bravo 2, your signal's getting weak. Copy that. Point. Go. No sign of anything. Squad two, go. Probably all dead anyway. Cut the chatter, damn it. Hear that? Contact thirty meters ahead. Report, Bravo two. Form up, everyone. Visual? Negative. I don't... Whoa. What the hell is that? Oh my god.
god. No. Terran Intelligence has spent the last two weeks analyzing flight data from the Tombaugh Station attack. The data on the Sheevan Lucifer has been given special attention. Intelligence believes the Sheevans were tracking the captured Tyrannus cruiser through subspace to the station. Intelligence doesn't know how the Sheevans tracked the Tyrannus escort, but they've got a team of engineers trying to figure it out. They're also analyzing the shield system on the Lucifer. Unlike the shields on the Sheevan fighters and bombers, the shield appears impervious, not merely resistant, to all of our weapons. With the loss of Tombaugh Station, the Sheevans have gained control of the Ribos subspace node. That leaves only two subspace jumps between the Lucifer fleet and the Vasudan homeworld. We must defend the Vasuda Prime. Not only is it the humane thing to do, but it's in our own interests. If the Sheevans gain control of that system, it will be a short walk to Earth itself. While their proximity to Earth is cause for concern, we have no reason to believe the Sheevans know the location of our homeworld. There are dozens of star systems off the Ribos node, and the Sheevans will likely have to examine them all. It is obvious, however, that they are narrowing it down, and we can't afford to give up one more inch. The Lucifer-class destroyer was last sighted in the Ribos system, leading us to believe that Antares is the focal point for the next Sheevan offensive. We're going to move the Galatea and its fleet to the Beta Aquilae system, in case the Sheevans decide to attack Vasuda Prime through there. Command is sending another Orion-class destroyer, the GTD Bastion, to the Antares system to help us with the blockade. But for the time being, we're the only defense. I am pleased to announce we have two new weapons to use against the Sheevans, the Hercules Heavy Assault Fighter and the Synaptic Cluster Bomb. You may study these in the tech room. They will prove very useful. Report in 20 minutes for your mission briefings. We are under general quarters because a fighter patrol detected advanced ships from the Lucifer fleet approaching Vasuda Prime. Somehow the Shivan forces have circumvented our blockade at Antares and now control the Deneb system. We are en route to Deneb as we speak. ETA is 35 minutes, so when you leave here, report to your wing station for immediate mission briefings. The Lucifer itself is behind the Vanguard force, so we can expect it to make an appearance at any time. The Vasudan Terran Ulysses project has been completed, and the Galatea has received a complement of these fighters. It is the most maneuverable craft ever developed by the PVN or the GTA, and it should be extremely useful in this next series of sorties. It can also be equipped with the Prometheus Cannon, the most powerful cannon weapon we've ever developed. Use them both well. Intelligence has concocted a daring plan to enable us to learn more about the Sheevans. We're going to attempt to capture a Sheevan fighter. Suit up and report to your wing stations for briefings immediately. And we retreated to our home system. Abandoned our empire. We believed at home we would be safe. For they are not a terrestrial species. We know when we entered subspace, we were trespassers. But our planet is our home. And yet still, they came. And our world is gone. We have now entered the Deneb system. After your investigation of the Lucifer at Antares, Terran Command has deduced that the Sheevans will be attempting a multiple-pronged attack on Vasuda Prime, coming from Deneb and Antares. The Intrepid and the Minnow will be in charge of protecting the Antares Vasuda Prime node, while the Galatea and the Bastion will be guarding Deneb. We expect the main force of the Shivan attack will come through Antares, led by the Lucifer. A smaller secondary force led by the Demon-class destroyer Eva will come through Deneb. 
The Shivans already control the Vega Deneb jump node, so our defense will have to be at the Deneb Basuda Prime jump node. Finding and destroying the Eva Destroyer is our top priority. As you know, we captured a Shivan Dragon class fighter in Beta Aquilae. Our technicians have retrofitted this alien fighter with Terran instrumentation and gotten it into working condition. However, there are a few flaws with our redesign. We could not get the Shivan weaponry to operate, so this fighter has been equipped with Terran weaponry. We also could not properly operate the lateral thrusters or afterburners, so the ship's maneuverability is limited. We also have had some difficulty with the Shivan engine systems. In test runs, the Dragon broke down for short periods of time. We are looking into this problem as we speak. The capture of this Shivan fighter will bring great strides in fighter technology to the Alliance. There are a few of us left. We know we will soon be gone. And so we can see our fate as others will see it. There will be little legacy. No great expressions of what we once were. Our technology, our achievements, if ever they are seen again, will spawn none of the awe that filled our conquests. We know our fate. We are being eliminated. When we traveled subspace, the cosmic destroyers took note. When we conquered and colonized in galaxies where we had no place, the destruction and the anguish and the loss were the clarion call of our doom. And so the destroyers came for us. This is Admiral Shima. I'll be delivering your command briefs while you're on board the GTD Bastion. I extend a welcome to all pilots formerly stationed on the Galatea. I wish your reassignments could have come under better circumstances. The loss of the Galatea is a great blow to all of us. We've lost many friends and loved ones. We've also lost many great pilots. We will need to double our efforts if we plan on stopping the Shivan fleet. This brings me to the reason for this briefing. As some of you may have already heard, shortly after the destruction of the Galatea at 1900 last night, we received word that the Shivan Lucifer made the jump to Vesuda Prime. The Lucifer fleet bombarded Vesuda Prime from orbit for 13 hours straight. Most escaping transport ships were destroyed. All major Vesudan cities were leveled, and most of the landmass was rendered uninhabitable. All of our attacks launched from the nearby installations were defeated. We have lost contact with all Tyran ships in the area, but it appears that the Shivan fleet has now moved on. It's estimated that four billion innocent Vesudans lost their lives in the attack. Terran Command is preparing to help evacuate all survivors to other habitable worlds in the area. What we need to concentrate on now is keeping the Lucifer fleet from making further moves towards Earth. We've been put on standby status and ordered to assist in all evacuation operations in Vesuda Prime and the surrounding systems. We've lost Deneb. Antares is virtually undefended. Vesuda is a contested system. The Banshee laser is now ready for deployment. We've just received a partial shipment of them. The Banshee is specifically designed to take down Shivan shields. We have also received a full supply of Hornet Swarm missiles. These are the best anti-fighter missiles in our arsenal, and we expect they will receive heavy use on the Bastion. Full details are available in the tech room. We have now lost vital ground to the Shivans in the Antari system and Sirius. The number of systems between the Shivans and Earth are dwindling fast. Fortunately, we were able to save the Beta Aquilae communications terminal. Aside from that single post, we have lost communications with every outer colony. The following transmission was picked up by the Terran listening outpost in the Beta Aquilae system. We are a group of Asuna refugees 
seeking the assistance of any Terran ships. We are on board of a student science outpost when it was destroyed by the Shivans. We managed to land on this uncharted planet when our escape pod lost power. It's uninhabited, but we uncovered the remains of an ancient civilization. They were neither Terran, nor Vasudan, nor Shivan. Our scanning equipment was able to locate a storage device of some sort. It was heavily protected, which suggests it stores something quite valuable. Possibly information or technology. We are attempting to decipher the language of the device, but are fearful of Shiva attacks. I say this because it is immediately apparent that this planet was also destroyed by Shivan weapons. This is difficult to believe, considering the age of the remains, but the evidence is conclusive. What we ask is for rescue and an escort away from this planet. Our scientists are not normally a superstitious group, but having one's homeworld destroyed tends to shake your beliefs. Please send an armed rescue as soon as possible to these coordinates. Your next series of missions will require both massive firepower and intelligence. For this reason, I am assigning Alpha-1 to lead these missions. We will be attempting to rescue the Vsudan refugees from Altair. This mission will be facilitated by the new subspace drive we have received. For years, the GTA has tried to give a fighter the ability to do inter-system jumps. After monitoring the Beta Aquilae engagements, the GTA science colony at Seoul has finally been able to solve the puzzle. All GTA fighters are currently being equipped with inter-system subspace drives. Research and development have nearly completed Project Ursa, which should be our best bet at defeating the Shivan Lucifer Destroyer. For those of you that haven't been keeping up, Project Ursa is an attempt to make a new type of heavy bomber capable of carrying the Harbinger bomb. We expect that a wing of Ursas will be available to you on your return trip from Altair. The Harbinger will assist us greatly in any attacks against capital ships. Until recently, Harbingers were reserved for planetary attacks only. With this project nearing completion, we may be able to finally defeat the Lucifer. You may or may not want to use the new Disruptor missile to assist you in the next few missions. It is the only missile in our arsenal which allows us to completely shut down a cruiser for a short amount of time. It's definitely worth a look. Details are in the tech room. left for us, little time, but much irony. We did discover they are not invulnerable. The destroyers that darkened our skies like a plague can be harmed, but we have no way to deliver the hurt. We have the knowledge, but not the means. And so this is our legacy. In subspace, they cannot use their shields. And into subspace, they can be tracked. The Shivans have finally determined the location of the Sol system. The Lucifer has moved into position here in Sirius for the subspace jump to Delta Serpentis. From Delta Serpentis, she will certainly make the jump to Sol to destroy our homeworld. From the records you retrieved in Altair, we have discovered the means to destroy the Lucifer. As you know, our shield systems do not work in subspace. The same holds true for the Lucifer. More importantly, the records contain the information to enable us to track a capital ship into and inside subspace. If we can track the Lucifer into subspace, we believe a small strike force may be sufficient to destroy it. We have been assigned the task of destroying the Lucifer before she reaches Seoul. 
The Bastion is currently en route to intercept the Lucifer at the Sirius Delta Serpentis subspace node. The Bastion will attempt to provide close cover while Ursa bombers deliver a payload of Harbingers. We believe that without the shielding system it's relied on so heavily, the Lucifer will be vulnerable. Keep in mind that this is a time-critical operation. If we do not enter subspace soon after the Lucifer, we cannot launch our attack. From your earlier scans of the Lucifer in the Deneb system, we have determined that it is powered by five primary reactors. These reactors are spread out across the Lucifer. If all five reactors are destroyed in a short period of time, the Lucifer won't have a chance of surviving. We don't have much time. Report for mission briefings immediately. I know why the Ancient Ones were destroyed, and I know what they knew. I know that if not for the Shivans, they would have perished long before. Without the Shivans, someone would have discovered the Ancient Ones in their infancy, and eliminated them. Just as surely as they eliminated countless billions of others. I believe it is only the Destroyers who are killed. The Shivans are the great destroyers, but they are also the great preservers. That is why, when we moved into space, there was no one powerful enough to kill us. Long had we been the destroyer, our turn had nearly come. In the Vasudan War, we learned how to adapt. We learned how to study our enemy. We learned how to overcome. We learned how to survive. And so we did. All the jump points from Earth are gone. But the Shivans can rebuild them. I'm told we can expect them again. But not in my lifetime. Such is liberation.